Messieurs, bonjour, bonjour à tous. Good afternoon, Bienvenue, everybody. ravi de vous accueillir ici dans cette très belle salle pour cette deuxième partie de journée, pour cette première journée, pour cette première journée euh, des rencontres Santé Public France. On est heureux de vous voir très nombreux. Je salue cette vidéo qui sont en direct et qui sont en direct et qui sont via le stream de cette, uh, cette journée. Bienvenue à tous, donc, nous allons cet après-midi pour uh, commencer le live stream. Nous allons parler de la pratique physique et des activités physiques, qui a été déclarée comme une cause nationale pour 2024. Et c'est dans le contexte du changement climatique. Nous allons poser plusieurs questions cet après-midi. Nous allons regarder les mécanismes physiologiques qui peuvent opérer quand le sport est en train de faire des différentes Done in heat waves, we'll be looking at the different potential actions in order for people to be able to do sports irrespective of their level. Also, we'll see how we can adapt settings or environments that this require a number of changes depending on the setting where you do sports. We'll also be talking about uh, supervisory staff in order to promote individual behaviors that are favorable to. Uh, sporting practices in heat waves. So I'd like uh, our three guests uh, to join me on stage. Uh, Jean Boutin, uh, who is a doctoral researcher at uh, the National Institute of Sport Expertise and Performance, INSEP. Gilles Ansage, a doctor specialized in sports medicine and biology from the Ministry of Sports, and Agnès Veil, in charge of prevention in healthcare and environment at Santé Public France. Welcome to the three of you, Jean Boutin, Gilles Ansage, and Agnès Veil. We're going to be uh, having to have this discussion for an hour. Of course, you may raise your hand at any time if you have questions for our panelists and uh, online participants can do the same. You can also send your questions through the uh, webcast platform and of course, uh, we will ask them. Now, let me just give you a figure. A WWF report that was published in 2021 revealed that uh, a rise in temperatures, a uh, four, deg four degree rise in temperatures, and that's what we seem to be heading for by 2000, uh, that, uh, that, uh, well, that it could deprive the French of two hours of sports. So we're, we're going to see what can be done to uh, further promote sports and physical activities. Jean Boutin, let's talk about your job at the INSEP, the National Institute of Sports, Expertise and Performance. Uh, what work do you do specifically to um, adapt to the acute effects of heat on the body? Thank you very much. At the INSEP, we examine the effects of uh, physical exercise in hot weather, and we do this particularly with elite athletes. So generally, when you when you just do take exercise, your muscles uh, produce metabolic heat, uh, so there's sweating, but also so you, so you lose this heat fairly easily in days like this, like today. However, in the hot weather, it's much more difficult to dissipate heat. So your body is going to work more. You're going to sweat more. You're going to um, you're going to circulate more blood to the skin. So in order to compensate and to keep the same level of effort, your heart rate has to go up, which means extra stress for your heart. Besides, your body temperature will rise, which also is additional stress for your brains and your muscle system, which means that uh, this will impair athletes' uh, physical performance between 25, uh, by 25 to 30 percent. But uh, it's not only negative uh, for your performance, it may also um, have negative effects for the health. Okay, so there's a general effect for the body due to the rise of temperatures when you do sports. Now, how should athletes adapt to this? What can be done? Can you tell us about uh, uh, the program that you started to support uh, elite athletes? What should we do? What should be done in hot weather for, so that people can uh, further do sports? Yes, we have uh, several models. For example, I have uh, my uh, colleague who's currently working uh, with uh, the Women uh, Rugby Sevens team. They are in the final stages of preparation for the Olympics. They are going to Portugal for two weeks. Of course, not all athletes can do this. So we have a model. The program we use most 
is uh, a scheme where athletes come to visit us in our laboratory, uh, the inset where we have a heat chamber. They do so they do uh, sessions uh, between 60 and 90 minutes at 35, 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so specifically, how does it work, these uh, sessions? Yes, so athletes come to our center, they stay with us for about two weeks, uh, so they do the session, then they rest for about 15 minutes in the room. We then give them an ingestible therm thermometer to measure the body temperature. We also give them a, a heart uh, a beat uh, a belt, a heart uh, rate uh, measuring belt. And we also uh, measure the electrolyte concentration. Then athletes will um, either uh, run on the treadmill, for example, uh, or on a bike, on an indoors bike at a very low intensity. Okay, what results have you measured in this type of uh, scenarios? Well, we check the body temperature. We look at uh, the volume of sweating. And we, we usually see that uh, the so sweating increases, so they the body uh, loses more water in order to dissipate heat. As a result, the concentration of electrolytes uh, is going to re be reduced. The blood flow will also increase. With uh, this preparation, the heart rate will not go up as much, and the same goes for the body temperature. So thanks to this adaptation, their performance in hot weather will be almost equal to that of a, of a normal day. The, interestingly, this adaptation will also help limit risks. For example, when they practice in hot weather, risks on their health. So there's a real drop in performance in much uh, hotter weather. And so, yes, there is, absolutely. For short uh, uh, sports, uh, one minute or less, there can be some uh, advantages, but uh, after 10 minutes, there's a real adverse effect, up to 30% if these are long and intense uh, sports. What are the warning signs that have to be uh, taken into account and what risks did you identify? Well, there are several symptoms. The most or the mildest symptoms are uh, cramps related to heat. That's all right. That's not no big deal. But it's uh, it's good to pay attention to this because uh, it shows that the body is not really tolerating heat. Then there can be heat uh, exhaustion. So you can uh, have uh, cardiovascular failure. And these are also signs uh, that you should pay attention to, because this may lead to a heat stroke. And heat strokes may also, but heat strokes may also appear without the aforementioned symptoms. So heat stroke, a heat stroke, and where is when your temperature uh, exceeds 40 degrees Celsius. There are also neuropsychiatric symptoms. For example, if you are more irritable, if people feel confused, and also it may lead to systematic or systemic uh, inflammation and organic injuries. In in which case, it's really a medical emergency, because if it uh, deteriorates further, people may end up in a coma and it may even lead to death. Right, you carried out a number of studies at the INSEP. Did you see that these risks could be limited if athletes were in good health? No, not necessarily. Of course, if you look at athletes at Olympics who uh, perform exceptionally, you could think you could think uh, that they are in good health and they could, uh, people uh, people watching te te television might think that they could do this but the thing is that athletes elite athletes have gone through intense preparation also so you can't really do that also depending on your uh, IMC on your BMI or your age there, there might be higher risks also there's exposure to sun there's potential dehydration, dehydration, and also you might be ill and you may not be aware of it. So even if you're in good health, it's no, no good idea to try and perform or to take exercise uh, in extreme hot weather because even very well-prepared athletes may suffer from heat strokes. Okay, so the studies you carried out are done with elite athletes. 
What's the main takeaways from these studies? And how can this be used for the general public, the findings of these studies? What we see is that uh, if you adapt to the heat, if you practice in the heat, if you adapt, well, you adapt better, which means that in heat waves, people like you and me uh, will have, so we will manage to adapt after a few heat waves. However, if you haven't had good sleep, this may raise uh, the risk. Because sometimes uh, in hot weather, it's very difficult to get good sleep at night. So usually at the end of the summer, the risk is lower. So it is higher at the beginning of the summer. It's very important to be vigilant. Thank you very much for all these specifications. If you have any questions on uh, the first part of this study that was carried out uh, with uh, elite athletes, do not hesitate to raise your hands. You can also send your questions through the webcast platform. Let's now move on to uh, Gilles Ensarguet, who is a doctor specialized in sports biology and medicine. Uh, for the Ministry of Sports. Thank you very much for being here today. So your specialty uh, is uh, to work with registered athletes. So we're going to be talking with you about uh, the training of uh, supervisors, sports supervisors, about the climate proofing of sports infrastructures and about uh, the advice you may give to unions, federations. First question, uh, is there any awareness amongst uh, unions? Uh, how mature are they in their preparation to this? Answer. Well, I'd be tempted to say that uh, federations or unions have really um, waken up to this uh, since uh, the first uh, heat wave plan that was established after the first after the 2003 heat wave. Uh, since then, on a regular basis, the Ministry of Sports informs sports unions uh, with all documents, whether official ones or uh, prevention guidance. So every year, we send all these documents to unions to raise awareness. And we hope that when unions get all this material, of course, they really own it and uh, disseminate it uh, with uh, their uh, members. Did you have any feedback from uh, unions uh, that, uh, that are really trying to evolve practices uh, and uh, support schemes for athletes? Answer. Yeah, well, of course, I cannot speak on behalf of all unions here, uh, but uh, we know of a number of unions that uh, have introduced specific rules, for example, for heat waves. Well, it's often in the professional sector and, and in elite sport. But we can see, for example, in the Premier League in football, in heat waves, excuse me, says the speaker, uh, games are often postponed or the starting time is changed. There are more uh, breaks for uh, um, more often breaks in games to really protect athletes. So I think there's a real awareness now. Now, of course, uh, at the level of smaller uh, community clubs, it's more difficult, but uh, it's very important that they should familiarize themselves with this. Uh, there are also international federations that uh, define uh, maximum temperatures or humidity rates, whereby you can. Uh, we, you can uh, call off or postpone uh, a, a fixture. Right, so the Ministry of Sports uh, is really doing this awareness work with uh, unions. Actually, you published uh, uh, a guidebook uh, athletic for an athletic and responsible summer. Yes, uh, we published it last year for the very first time, and it's going to be updated for this year. So uh, this year's edition has not come out yet, but uh, it should uh, be out uh, anytime soon. In this guidance, uh, we have about uh, 45 measures and recommendations, about two parts. One about uh, the protection of publics and health risks uh, related to heat. And another part, which is about sustainable development and which is focused on uh, managing waters and water and energy resources. So in the first part, we have information for athletes. There's a reminder of uh, a number of uh, tips, uh, uh, advice, and preventative measures. As uh, Jeanne has just said, we really encourage athletes to try and identify conditions related to heat uh, to make sure they act accordingly. There's also, uh, there are also reminders on hydration, sports equipment, diets, so uh, a whole range of tips that are very important uh, in hot weather. 
There is uh, uh, another part about uh, the organization of uh, sports events, so that's more for organizers. We encourage them to establish prevention plans uh, in uh, their unions uh, for um, heat waves. We ask them to uh, make arrangements to ensure that water is available for athletes and uh, members of the public. So a number of uh, precautionary measures. And a third part for public authorities, uh, where we remind them that there's a number of plans. Uh, there's the ORSEC plan on uh, the... Uh, so the, on heat wave, uh, heat wave situations. There's another plan issued by the Ministry of uh, the Environment with uh, a set of recommendations for the sporting community. Right, we also need to talk about uh, the evolution of infrastructures. How can gymnasiums, stadiums and venues uh, uh, be adapted to these uh, new conditions? Are you already looking at this? Yes, well, it's a bit tricky. Um, a survey was conducted recently and it showed that 50% of uh, sports uh, infrastructures were built before 1987. Do you mean we, they have to be rebuilt? Well, so 50% and uh, we found uh, that uh, they were uh, inappropriate uh, for heat waves. So the answer is yes, well, I think we'll have to refurbish them and adapt them. And actually, we have a, a new plan for the adaptation to climate change, and a number of steps will be taken to ensure the resilience of sports infrastructures, to uh, refurbish them and make sure they are up to standards. But uh, new facilities, uh, um, for the construction of new facilities, these issues were factored in to make sure that uh, they can withstand uh, extreme weather. So there are, there's a number of things, the choice of building materials, insulation. Um, also, we have um, uh, infrastructures uh, where you can... Uh, uh, we can we've, you can vegetate uh, uh, roofs, uh, walls, uh, as uh, this uh, can absorb heat. And it's particularly... Uh, Beneficial. Do you have any example of infrastructures that are built uh, according to these principles? I suppose that uh, for the Olympics, a number of venues like uh, pools and gymna gymnasiums uh, were designed like that. Well, the latest uh, facilities uh, that were built for the Olympics, of course, uh, uh, have uh, factored all this in. Okay. You said also that it was very important uh, to plan ahead for competitions. So what's necessary to adapt uh, some uh, sports competitions? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure actually uh, we'll have uh, temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius in Paris this summer, well, if you look at the weather today, but maybe... Uh, maybe it will be like that. Now, um, a number of competitions were postponed. And who makes the call for that? Well, it depends on the type of competition. If it's a, a major international event, the organizer uh, will call the shots. It's usually uh, the international federation. But uh, for the Olympics, uh, there's the French government, the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, that uh, uh, call the shots here. Well, I, I don't think that uh, the Olympics will be uh, suspended or interrupted, but uh, uh, there might be some adjustments for a number of competitions depending on the rules established by federations. Well, we can see that uh, the Football World Cup uh, was in Qatar uh, last week. The 2030 uh, Games will be in Morocco. So does this require any specific measures, considering that temperatures are not the same as in Paris? Yes, uh, I think... Uh, Organizers will have to pay attention to this going forward. It's particularly hard for major international events because they often take place in the summer, especially for outdoors sports. Uh, we, we try to have, uh, let's say, non-rainy climates because for some competitions it's very difficult uh, uh, if, the, if you have a rainy weather. But it's very difficult to disrupt uh, timelines. Uh, because there are already many, many different events during the year. So I think uh, it will take uh, uh, another few years uh, to, to get organized. And also, as I was saying, the summer period is in high demand uh, for uh, climate-related reasons, but also because most championships stop in the summer. So that uh, is the, the, the ideal spot to organize uh, 
uh, events. Okay, so the 2030 World Cup, uh, Football World Cup in Morocco, and also an event in uh, LA. Right. Now, uh, Gilles, how can the general public get informed about uh, all these changes and about uh, all the uh, yeah, changes in uh, uh, sports, sporting practices? Right, well, an, a number of uh, things are available for the general public. We always have information campaigns uh, for the people. We have information available on the Ministry of Sports, on the Ministry of for Health, uh, the Ministry of uh, Environmental Transition. So there's a number of uh, documents and, and recommendations available that are online, and of course, that uh, anyone can have access to. Now, I I'm not only talking about uh, the general public, but uh, uh, at the Ministry of Sports, uh, we have created a special mailbox where people from the sports community or ecosystem can give us some feedback from uh, the community level, from grassroots level, uh, and it will be open uh, over the summer. So are there, will there be any questions uh, for uh, Gilles, for the Ministry of Sports, for Gilles? We don't, are there any questions for Gilles, uh, for the Ministry of Sports? Anyone would like to raise their hand? The lady there, the mic is on its way, or maybe for Jeanne, of course, questions for Jeanne as well. And uh, we'll hand over to Anis Vallée of Santé Publique France in just a few minutes. So let's take a few minutes, uh, if you agree to it, for a few Q&As. Hello, please introduce yourself and ask a question. Good afternoon, my name is Amandine Richaud-Cron from uh, the ADEM which is uh, the government agency for the environmental transition. Um, the issue of sport in uh, climate change is something that uh, we are intensively working on today. So I, I don't know if the ministry is aware of that because it actually is something quite recent. But we're going to issue an opinion on uh, physical activity and sports in the context of climate change with a number of recommendations on buildings. So of course that means we'll be working with you and uh, we are happy to work with you to provide you with our expertise. Oh, thank you very much, but next time you can join us on stage. I do hope so. Unfortunately, it will not be released as planned uh, due to the upcoming elections. Probably not before the Olympics. Uh, for your information, we have the ADEM magazine, and the July edition will be exclusively dedicated to this and to the continuity of major national and international sports events and also uh, all environment-friendly habits and also the issue of infrastructures. Uh, so we talk about uh, buildings, uh, active mobility, active design, uh, also outdoor planning and everything related to public uh, health challenges, for example, to fight uh, the uh, obesity epidemic that uh, is spreading across the world. So I suppose the document will be available on the ADEM website. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it would also be sent out uh, to local governments uh, and to subscribers per email. But uh, once we are allowed again to communicate on this, of course, uh, you will be informed uh, of this. Uh, but uh, we've worked uh, with the Ministry of Sport and uh, technical experts. Thank you very much for this extra information. Do we have any other questions? I can see a gentleman there. Hello, welcome. Can you please introduce yourself and ask your question? Hello, I work at the Pitié saint prière Hospital. We've long campaigned uh, in the hospital community uh, for uh, the importance of uh, taking into account uh, exposure to sun, which is much more frequent than exposure to high temperatures. And I haven't seen any statements or the announce, any announcement of a prevention mechanism, particularly for uh, young people, for outdoor sports. I haven't seen anything uh, encouraging them to protect themselves against uh, uh, sunshine, particularly to prevent skin cancer. It seems to be the sort of the poor relationship in this sector, uh, especially for young people, you know that uh, you build your health capital, you build it up over the years. 
So I think that uh, this would require more communication and uh, stronger schemes uh, uh, at uh, at uh, general level, uh, not only for uh, elite athletes, but also for amateur sports. Well, we have uh, the guidebook that I just mentioned, uh, an athletic responsible summer. And actually, we have recommendations about uh, protection against uh, uh, sunlight. I remember a few years back, we actually did a campaign, I think it was with Santé Publique France, a campaign about the prevention of skin cancer. So maybe we should uh, update it and uh, start it again. But uh, we shall take this into account uh, to remedy this issue. Okay, we're going to move on to Agnès Verrier. Uh, we'll get back to you later on for further questions, especially if we have new questions coming up. Agnès Verrier, you're in charge of uh, prevention and uh, in health and environment at Santé Publique France. And you particularly focus on the prevention of risks related to heat waves uh, with a specific uh, population. It's what we call uh, occasional sportsmen or um, Weekend warriors. So, uh, wh wh who is the occasional sports person? Is it you, me, everybody? Uh, well, actually, as uh, Jeanne just said it earlier, for top level athletes, Jill was talking also about uh, club members or federation members. What we'll do is rather address occasional sportsmen, those that uh, practice and supervise occasional sport that would be on Sundays or someone uh, going for a run every day, by in, but individually without any supervision. And we would address, we would target rather that group of people. And this is uh, the type of recommendations that we would draft, especially for these people. Are they more vulnerable, more sensitive to heat increase rather than uh, supervised athletes? And, and how about uh, heat strokes? Since January 2024, they are considered as a uh, vulnerable group for high intensity heat, but that's rather linked to overexposure to heat. And this is what is considered to be a vulnerability. Top level athletes are medically supervised. They're also supervised from a technical point of view. But individual athletes are left on their own. So we've carried out studies that showed that this category of people overestimated their capacity to uh, withstand heat. But also, they were not really willing to change their habits when uh, temperature would rise. So it's quite a specific group. So we should uh, raise awareness among them to change their habits and um, conditions when they when the temperature rises. And you've actually designed a website for this. Yes, indeed. This year, we have uh, created a new website alongside the heat wave scheme. The message conveyed was quite brief and short that would recommend some uh, soft activities during heat wave periods. But as you said, uh, as an introduction, since uh, 2015, we've had more and more heat waves. We have persisting heat during the summer, especially in the south of France, and forecasts show that these heat wave periods will multiply and temperatures will rise. Therefore, what we wanted was to develop a scheme, a package that would uh, try to change lifestyle habits, not only during heat wave periods, but also uh, any time, during any time, so that people would live normally, especially athletes. The aim being to adapt and adjust their uh, physical activity accordingly. So the aim is to impact the behavior of athletes, right? This is your objective. Yes. We act upon behaviors, we promote the gestures that are health-enhancing, 
We don't need to prove anymore that physical activity is uh, conducive to health. We don't have to uh, promote physical activity, but rather to show that it needs to be adapted, adjusted, uh, and change the time and venue of physical activity whenever required. And this scheme that targets two vulnerable groups in its first edition we hope to extend this to other vulnerable groups in the future. We have ch chosen for the first year because the results of the study showed us that there was an important effort to make because they were not willing to change their habits and the population, the general public, would not identify sportsmen, occasional sportsmen, as a vulnerable group as a group that would be vulnerable to rising temperature when practicing sport. So we have also established uh, some uh, recommendations with the INSEP, with the Sports Management Authority, with the Heat Wave Management Public Authority of tw uh, since 2014. We already have a set of recommendations, so we already have uh, available tools that we could draw upon the aim is to have a toolbox, to have a positive message, solutions, off-the-shelf solutions, so that people practicing sport on an occasional way, in an unsupervised manner, would be able to in, uh, draw upon this and uh, use these tools. Would it depend on the level of... Uh, uh, of physical activity, if you're good or not good. Well, we'll see it afterwards, but I will spoil a little bit. I do a, So the higher the temperature, the more we should uh, practice physical activity early in the day, which listen to one's body. If it's hot, if we haven't slept after a day of work in a high temperature environment, Either we would we should favor soft activities or we would postpone physical activity to the following day. Our uh, clothes, our outfit should also be uh, um, uh, suitable for sweating. We should drink and pay attention to what food we ingest. We should drink before, during and after physical activity. We continue to eat as we normally should do. I'm uh, paying attention to, I'm uh, referring to uh, the type of food we should ingest when uh, we have a heat wave. Normally we want to eat less, but when we do physical activity, then we need to eat accordingly, obviously. If we're in good shape and well prepared, oh, well, there's also for this occasional sportsman, there are those that are on holiday and that decide to resume physical activity as well. Tennis, for instance, or anything, or go for a run, when the body isn't prepared, of course. So we also have to have some proper training, some fitness preparation before resuming physical activity. So, in a nutshell, we talk about comfort, about well-being. It's not only to push one's efforts to the maximum, but rather the aim is not to beat uh, records. Indeed, indeed. This is what we say in the, in the video clip, actually. We should not try to exceed records to make performances. We should decide to practice sport at an early hour of the day, to go for a swim, for instance, to use or to, to favor venues where there's shade. So there are two videos online on the Vivre avec la chaleur, uh, fr website. In less than one minute, they tell you what type of physical activity you should practice. How can we adapt one sports activity when it's hot? You should adjust to make sure that it is a pleasure. You should favor soft sports like yoga, walking, or swimming.
And you should wear ample clothes that uh, are suitable for sweating. You should rather practice sport early in the day or favor cycling, uh, football. And please drink before, during and after physical activity without waiting for having first, for, before being thirsty. You should adopt also your body. You should also inquire about where you can find public water. Listen to your body and it's not the time to do performances. And here you go. Now you know us. You know enough tricks to live with the heat. So it seems to be uh, the fundamentals of the things you need to know. But this is part and parcel of an awareness raising campaign for the general public, so as to anticipate risks. Yes, indeed, because our study showed, as I recall you, that not only physical activity is not considered to be a risky uh, activity when temperatures rising, but also vulnerability to heat is for majority of the population linked to the elderly and less so to children. But nobody thinks that overexposure to heat could be a risk for an adult or even a young child. This is why we need to lay emphasis on that type of uh, scheme. And this is for a sustainable campaign. Even if we put this campaign under the limelight during the summer, it's available and it can be accessible all year long. We have partnerships with the Ministry for Sports to promote uh, this and convey these messages. And you've said it already, rightly so. The aim is to have life habits that would be viable over the long term. And it's not because it's not hot right now that in two weeks, three weeks, we're not going to have a heat wave as we usually do every year. There's another question to ask on the website with the second video that is made available to you, when and where should we practice sport? You have the answer to that question with that video. When and where should we practice sport when it's hot? When it's hot, you can continue practicing sport, but you have to adapt your sport's physical activity because your body is tiring faster. You should practice early on when it's still fresh and during the day, you should choose shaded areas, green areas, like a park, for instance. If you can, why don't you swim in a supervised area like a lake or the sea? Indoors, you can favor um, sports clubs with there's air conditioning or swimming pools with there's air conditioning. You can also go to swimming pools, stadiums and parks when it's less hot. You could get inquiries with the uh, municipal council where you can have all the available information. And here you go, we have all the tips and tricks to live with the heat. So, according to the town halls, the municipal councils, you can have sports facilities that can open later. Swimming pools, yes, indeed, parks. Everything that would depend upon uh, the uh, political uh, impetus of the municipal council. I would like to uh, pick up on this and say that we have uh, more detailed articles on the website, especially on the sunshine risk, because this is something that we have incorporated, especially for athletes. We have said, okay, you should wear hats, you should wear sunglasses, you should wear uh, a t-shirt uh, uh, and you should uh, wear sun lotion wherever your skin is exposed to sunshine and you should practice sports where there's shade so that you're less exposed to sunshine rays. Thank you for all these precisions and if we have any precision, there was a question that was asked on the platform talking about the physiological differences between men and women as to heat and what about the role of fabric worn by athletes and what about the impact that it can have and differences are there any gender disparities oh well that might have been a debate do you have an answer 
What about the physiological differences between men and women? We'll talk about uh, uh, clothes afterwards. Yes, there are differences between men and women, as we can see in terms of performance as well. At the top level, we are all well prepared. So we follow the same protocol made before men and women, so there's no discrepancy, no disparities, but there's always differences between the two. It's more a matter of individual rather than a gender. So the variability between the two genders adds up to the individual variability. Because there could be a difference between Agnes and myself, or the two of you. So do you see a difference, an influence, an impact of heat wave on, uh, on gender or not? Well, it depends on the individual. Among athletes, I don't see a lot of differences between men and women. But uh, we're talking about top-level athletes. It's more on an individual uh, scale. What about clothes? Do we have a different approach for athletes when it's hot? There's no uh, equipment uh, manufacturer here on site, but they could say how they adapt materials and equipment to sports activity. Yes, indeed. I don't know the specific features of fabrics that are used for clothes, but colors impact have an impact if it's better to have white than black or the type of fabric also. Yeah, there are suggestions like as, as suggested by the IOC. I don't know all the details, but choice of uh, clothes play a, a role. <laughs> if we have long or short clothes, that would rather uh, depend on the number of spectators and uh, the commercial impact rather than protection of athletes. That's an advocate of the fish. As for equipment, we have to strike the right balance between protecting oneself against sunshine and finding the fabric that would be conducing to sweating. But because this is for thermal regulation purposes, we need to strike the right balance. Agnes? Okay. In the room, do we have any questions? Yes, please ask your question. Denis Shah, I'm from the University and the Association for the Prevention of Air Pollution. I have a question for Agnes Verrier. We talked about heat wave and uh, temperature rising, but often we also have air temperature, um, or air pollution. What about ozone? Is there anything being done as to monitor the quality of air? That's actually a message that is part and parcel of our articles, where we factored in the presence of air pollution episodes during heat wave. And we have provided advice and this comes from the High Council of Public Health. And accordingly, we did take into account the risk of air pollution, and we would be all the more willing to work with uh, your association or other associations that measure the quality of air so as to have this scheme set up. But this is also part and parcel of our process. Actually, it's in, our, in the articles that are on the website. This is why it's important to practice sport early in the day, especially when you have air pollution peaks, you have less pollution in the morning rather than uh, throughout the day later in the day. There was a question when we talk about heat in our discussions, that's not only heat that we have to take into account, drought also, um, strong uh, rainwater, um, floods, anything that could be taken into account. That's part and parcel of ecological transition, the evolution of uh, weather um, cycles. Do you take that into account when you raise awareness with uh, federations about these subjects? Yes, it's part of the manual. 
There's a chapter dedicated to uh, sustainable development, and we have recommendations uh, that were um, set out. Uh, we want uh, uh, equipment manufacturers to take into account the necessity to save energy and water. There are sports equipments that sports facilities that have air conditioning. Uh, we have to be careful about the energy that they use and we need to make savings and for sports facilities temperature should not be below for with the air conditioning facilities should not be uh, above uh, under 26 degrees and otherwise it takes too much energy and also all windows should be closed otherwise it's nonsensical have you studied this, the difference of temperature between outdoor, with it, between outside and inside? We've talked about air conditioning indoors. Well, I imagine that the humidity plays a role because we've set the humidity level. There's no radiation, so inside it would be even more complicated because it could be more humid. Sweating is more difficult when you have the temperature rising. So you, when you have the sun rays striking the skin, that would increase temperature. So if you have the same temperature inside and outside, especially if you're not in the shade, that would be more difficult. Is there any question? to talk about adapting one's physical activity when facing climate change. Hello. My question is addressed to Mrs. Verrier. We've talked about strategy targeting some individuals. What about strategies that have a level? Cities, why not planting trees or adjust and adapt to working hours to allow people to practice physical activity or at other levels? Yes, we have other measures that are being implemented at the territory level, but with Santé Publique France and especially for the prevention and protection of health, we try to promote health enhancing measures uh, in terms of physical activity, we could have invited other speakers that would have spoken about these adjustments within environments, territories, and so on. Does anyone want to take the mic to pick up on that? Would you like to raise your hand? Do not hesitate. Go on. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. I'm Anne Boisin, I'm the representative of the Student Federation. You were talking earlier on on the promotion of physical activity for health purposes. What about the recommendations for the future health professionals or current health professionals that would supervise these phys physical activity sessions? What would you recommend? Well, I would urge you to listen to the next session. I don't know if the speakers are still here. That would actually deal with physical activity. I am not entitled to speak on that subject. So, okay. At 3 o'clock, look at the uh, agenda. You will see when the subject is addressed. Anyone else in the room? Would anyone raise your hand? Go on. Hey. The gentleman in the back, and then I have an observation to make on the live platform. Welcome. Hello. Hello, Olivier Bouchou. I'm a doctor. What about people having um, problems related to their weight would you, in overweight situation would we should we tell them to stop practicing physical activity or to continue well these people accumulate risks and that could have an impact on their health i don't know the recommendation the official recommendation for the, that type of uh, condition. However, I would rather um, make the same recommendations as those for those subject to asthma when we have air pollution peaks. They should maintain soft physical activity or, or postpone physical activity. 
I would um, go along those lines as well. If they follow a program already, they should keep up, carry on. But at hours of the day where the temperature is uh, lower, however, if it's start, someone starting a program, I would rather recommend to postpone that physical activity program. Do we have any other questions in the room? I don't have a question, but rather an observation coming from the live platform. The balance to be struck between clothes and heat is quite straightforward. We should wear an ordinary clothes, cotton, for instance. That works very well. And that's it. Do you confer? No. No opinion on the matter. <laughs> We need to strike the right balance between the two. I'm sure there are different uh, recipes, different uh, solutions. So after this wonderful discussion for nearly an hour, the takeaway message is that we need to anticipate uh, in every of your departments, right? Yes, indeed, of course. This is why we are setting up uh, protocols to uh, for adjustment purposes for top-level athletes. We need to anticipate uh, and heat waves or high temperatures for athletes. So we need to work with athletes. Do are we going? Are we working mid-term or long-term with federations? What about the federations? Do they trigger uh, the programs? Uh, Immediately or not? Well, for some federations, it's already enshrined in their uh, regulations and they uh, apply it immediately. Of course, we have to anticipate it's not, uh, it's not, we're not organizing an event. It's not the day before an event that you will actually say, okay, tomorrow it's a heat wave, so you need to launch a program and make sure that the staff is trained, that we have enough water. Let the venue be fitted with the necessary facilities. So, when we organize big events, uh, competitions, we need to have a backup plan in case of heat waves or weather forecasts that are uh, actually uh, showing high temperatures. Yes, indeed, of course. Since I have the floor, I would like to pick up on this and say the following. We've talked about heat waves, but there's something else to say. During heat waves, we saw that there was a, a, a lot of uh, uh, people drowning. There was a high drowning rate. So we need to have a uh, drowning prevention campaign because during these heat waves, people would uh, swim anywhere, anytime, and not uh, in venues, not in places where we have supervision. This is why we have accidents and we have a net increase of people drowning. So please, this is for you if you want to swim in the Seine, apparently it's possible. So anticipating is better. Maybe it's better for occasional sportsmen to adjust their physical activity practice rather than for federations. Yes, it's easier if they are willing to adjust. Depending on the temperature, this is why our HP campaign started beginning of May, early May, and it will extend and keep carry on throughout the whole summer. The aim is that it does exist all year long, and we'll have uh, some other launches uh, throughout the year, and we'll try to connect with local community centers. Uh, should uh, some sport events be postponed if there's a problem for the Olympic Games and in case of heat waves? Yes, the organization committee has anticipated a backup plan in case of uh, uh, heat wave peaks they will be certainly postponed. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful discussion. Thank you, Mr. Boutet, Agnès Verrier. Thank you for uh, this uh, wonderful discussion. I would like to recommend you uh, to, uh, to uh, consult the website that we talked about because it's very interesting. And we'll continue because we have another session in 15 minutes. Thank you.